Clan MacLeod of Race A, commonly known as Clan MacLeod of Race A, is a Highland Scottish clan, which at its height held extensive lands on the Isle of Race A in west coast of Scotland. From the 14th century up until the beginning of the 17th century there were two branches of MacLeods, the MacLeods of Dunvegan and Harris, Clan MacLeod, and the MacLeods of Lewis. In Gaelic the MacLeods of Lewis were known as Seol Thorkale, Seed of Torquil, and the MacLeods of Dunvegan and Harris were known as Seol Thormoid, Seed of Tormod. Dot the traditional progenitor of the MacLeods was Leod, who in tradition made a son of Olaf the Black, King of Man and the Isles tradition gave Leod two sons, Tormod, progenitor of the MacLeods of Harris and Dunvegan, Seol Thormoid, and Torquil, progenitor of the MacLeods of Lewis, Seol Thorkale. In the 16th and early 17th centuries the chiefly line of the clan MacLeod of the Lewis was nearly extinguished by the bloodthirsty and power-hungry chief Old Rory his various offspring. This feuding directly led to the fall of the clan and loss of its lands to the clan Mackenzie. One line of the 16th century chiefly family, the MacLeods of Race A, survived and prospered on their lands for centuries thereafter. The current chief of the MacLeods of Race A is Roderick John MacLeod. The 18th chief who resides in Tasmania, he is the fifth chief to have lived in Tasmania. Today, the Clan MacLeod of Race A, the Lewis, and Clan MacLeod are represented by Associated Clan MacLeod Societies and the chiefs of the three clans. The association is made up of 10 national societies across the world, including Australia, Canada, England, France, Germany, New Zealand, Scotland, South Africa, United States of America, and Switzerland. Today the official clan tradition is that the MacLeods descend from Leod, born around 1200. Traditionally, from Leod's son Torma the MacLeods of Harris and Dunvegan claim descent, and through Leod's other son Torquil the MacLeods of Lewis claim descent. The earliest evidence of this traditional descent from all of the Black may only date as far back as the 17th century, from the era of Ian Moore MacLeod, chief of clan MacLeod 1626 to 1649, who was styled John McOlis of Dunvegan in a document dated 1630. Also, his son Ian Brake, chief of Clan MacLeod 1664-1693, is thought to have been the first MacLeod to incorporate the coat of arms of the kings of Man into his own coat of arms, because the MacLeods imagined themselves descended from King Olaf of Man. The earliest reference to the MacLeods of Lewis is found in a royal charter granted in the reign of David II King of Scots, reign 1329-1371, when Torcall MacLeod was granted the four-penny land of Ascent, possibly in C.1343. In this charter Torquil had no designation, showing that he held no property until then. By 1344 the MacLeods of Lewis held the Isle of Lewis as vassals of the MacDonalds of Islay. In time the MacLeods of Lewis grew in power, with lands stretching from the islands of Lewis, Race A, the district of Waternish on Skye, and on the mainland Ascent, Coyac, and Gaterlock. Fall of the Clan and Loss of Lewis The fall of the clan and loss of the Isle of Lewis began with Rewery and his marriage to a daughter of John Mackenzie of Kintail. This marriage had produced a son named Torquil Condenac. Rewery later disowned Torquil Condenac on account of the alleged adultery between his wife and the Morris and Brieve of Lewis. In about 1566 Torquil Condenac took up arms, supported by the Mackenzies and kept his supposed father Rewery as prisoner within the castle of Stornoway. Rewery took for his third wife a daughter of Hector O.G. Maclean of Duart and had by her two sons, Torquil Dub and Tormod. Rowery then made Torquil Dub his heir, and again Torquil Condenac took up arms supported by the Mackenzies. Rowery was again captured, and many of his men were killed. Upon Torquil Condenac's victory all charters and title deeds of Lewis were handed over to the Mackenzies. Rowery was held captive in the castle of Stornoway, commanded by Torquil Condenac's son John, though was freed when Rowery O.G. attacked the castle and killed John. Upon his release Rewery ruled Lewis in peace for the rest of his life, 1596. Upon the death of Rewery and MacLeod of the Lewis, the chieftainship of the clan passed to Torquil Dub. In 1596 Torquil Dub, with a force of seven or eight hundred men, devastated Torquil Kananaka's lands of Koyak and the Mackenzie lands of Loch Broom. In consequence, Torquil Dub was summoned to appear before the Privy Council and was declared a rebel when he failed to appear. Torquil Dub was finally betrayed by the Brieve of Lewis, chief of the Morrisons of Ness. Once captured, the Brieve sent Torquil Dub to Coigac where he and his companions were beheaded by Torquil Conanac, on the orders of Kenneth Mackenzie of Kintail in July 1597. Following this, Lewis was commanded by Torquil Dub's three young sons and his illegitimate brother Niall. 
The MacLeods of Lewis were also aided by the MacLeods of Harris and the MacLeans. Because the Mackenzies now had the title deeds of Lewis, the island was forfeited by the Act of Estates in 1597, which gave the Scottish government an excuse to attempt the colonization of the island. After the conquest of Lewis by the Mackenzies, Niall MacLeod, brother of Torquil Dub, his nephews, and about 30 others took refuge on Barisay in the mouth of Lochrobe on the west coast of Lewis. For almost three years the small group of MacLeods held out against the Mackenzies before being driven off. With the end of the line of the MacLeods of Lewis, the title Lord MacLeod was the second title of the Mackenzie, Earls of Cromarty. Also the chiefship of the MacLeods of Lewis has passed to the MacLeods of Rassay, who hold it to this day. The MacLeods of Rassay are descended from Malcolm MacLeod Knight of Lewis who, about 1510, gave his second son, known as Callum Garp, Malcolm the Stout, of his patrimony the islands of Rasay and Rona as well as the districts of Coinjack and Gaerlock on the western mainland of Ross. The first MacLeod of Rasay, Mag Gillicaluim, was Malcolm Garb MacLeod, C.1503, 1560. In 1532 we find Farquhar, Bishop of the Isles, had occasion to call to account MacNeil of Barra and Mac Gillicalum Cowlet of Rasay. In 1549 Dean Monroe stated that Rasay belonged to Mac Gillicolum by the sword and the Bishop of the Isles by heritage. Malcolm was married and had at least two sons, Alexander and John. John was known as Ian Notwe, John of the Axe, who carried off Janet, wife of his uncle Roderick MacLeod Axe of Lewis and afterwards married her. By Janet Mackenzie, John had several sons and a daughter. The sons died in the massacre in the island of Isay. Malcolm's son, Malcolm Oji effectively became Laird of Rasay during the lifetime of his father when he received a royal charter, dated July 20, 1596, investing him with his father's lands. The description of Malcolm Oji's death, like that of his brother John, survives in various manuscripts. On August 11, 1611 a ship cast anchor in Clocken Bay, Rasay. On board were Murdoch Mackenzie, son of John Roy Mackenzie IV of Caerlock, and several of his followers. In the ensuing fight all the MacLeods, including Malcolm Oji, on board the ship was slain, including Malcolm Oji. Several Mackenzies were also killed in the fight. John Garp, 7 Chief, circa 1625-1671, who was served heir to his father on September 22, 1648, was distinguished among all his contemporaries for his size and strength. He met his death by drowning in the Minch when returning from Lewis at Easter 1671. John Garb was probably the last chief to live in Brochel Castle. The dating of Brochel has generally been regarded as 15th century work, based on its ground plan and features of the stonework. Clearly it had a strategic position being on the main sea route from Kyle of Lokelsh to Lewis and looking out over to Applecross in Ross on the mainland. It would have been highly desirable to control the waters of the inner sound in those empire building days. 1745-1746 Jacobite Uprising Malcolm, ex-chief, C.1691, 1761, was a Jacobite, whom, accompanied by his second son, Dr. Murdoch MacLeod of Ayr, and his cousin Captain Malcolm MacLeod of Bray, joined Prince Charles Edward Stuart with 100 men. The chief had wisely taken the precaution to convey his estate to his eldest son John, so that whatever might be the outcome of the Jacobite rising the Rasay estate would remain secure in the hands of a member of the family. After the Battle of Culloden, Rasse managed to return to his estate with some of his men. In retribution for MacLeod of Rasse taking part at Culloden for the Jacobite cause, government troops landed in Rasse, destroyed Rasse House and set fire to every house on the island. All cattle, horses, and sheep were rounded up and appropriated, even the boats were confiscated. It is amazing to discover how well the island recovered from this orgy of destruction. After the Battle of Culloden, Prince Charles Edward Stuart spent several weeks in the highlands and islands of Scotland avoiding capture with government troops in pursuit. There was a price of £30,000 on his head. Prince Charles had for two days on Rasay but thinking the island too narrow and confined for the purpose of concealment, he departed on July 2, 1746. In Boswell's The Journal of a Tour to the Hebrides in 1773, we read that Rasay House was rebuilt by this Rasay, John XI of Rasay. His father was out in 1745 but had previously conveyed the estate to him so there was no forfeiture, but as the prince was known to have had an asylum in Race, those employed under the government burnt every house upon the island. Boswell continues, it is really a place where one may live in plenty and even in luxury. This island has abundance of black cattle, sheep, and goats, 
a good many horses, which are used for plowing, carrying out dung, etc. Dr. Johnson in his work A Journey to the Western Isles, said, This is truly patriarchal life. This is what we came to find. The lexicographer found life and race a most agreeable. Such a seed of hospitality amidst the winds and waters fills the mind with a delightful contrariety of images with the rough ocean and howling storm without, within is plenty and elegance, beauty, and gaiety, the song and the dance. In race, if I could have found in Ulysses, I you had fancied Phocaia. James, 12th Chief, 1761-1823, further improved the race estate and added to race house. He was Lieutenant Colonel of the 1st Isle of Skye Regiment. In 1805 he married Flora Ann, daughter of Lieutenant Colonel McLean of Muck, with issue of four surviving sons and one daughter, John, Loudon, James, Francis, and Hannah. James died in 1823 and was succeeded by his eldest son, John, who became 13th Chief of Race A. John was an officer in the 78th Highlanders, married Mary, only daughter of Sir Donald MacLeod of Arkaseg, a distinguished officer in the Indian Army. Their only child, Mary Julia Hastings born 1836, died in 1839, and is buried in the small chapel behind Racey House, where her memorial tablet can still be seen. A change in farming practices combined with the disastrous summers of 1839 and 1840 and the failure of cropping efforts led to poverty and distress. The family moved further into debt by further additions to race a house. Tenant crofters couldn't pay rents, overpopulation put demands on all resources, and as with other many landlords and highland clan chiefs, found themselves in financial difficulties. It was during this period that the region was affected with the highland clearances resulting in the mass depopulation of the highlands of Scotland. The estate was sold to George Rainey Esquire in around 1843. James MacLeod with his wife Mary was the first of the four MacLeod brothers to migrate to South Australia on October 12, 1838. Before leaving Scotland, James and the family bought land through the South Australian Company which was formed in London in 1835 and made a significant contribution to the foundation and settlement of South Australia. James' brother Loudon, who arrived in South Australia in 1840, took up land under occupation license, country known as the Tatiara, the beginning of settlement by white people of the region. Here, Loudon founded the station known as Nalong, a lease of 126 square miles which was granted to Loudon MacLeod on 26 February 1846. Flora Ann MacLeod and her son Francis and daughter Hannah arrived in Adelaide aboard the James Turkin on November 26, 1841. Mother and daughter took up residence at the Tavistock buildings in Adelaide. After continued poor health and bankruptcy, James died on November 12, 1844, and was buried at Rona. McLaren Vale which was land still owned by Loudon. He was only 31 years of age. Flora died at Adelaide on June 11, 1846 and was buried at West Terrace Cemetery. Flora expressed it as her dying wish that the remains of her son, James, should be exhumed from the site at Rona, and interred with her in the cemetery. This was done but not without extraordinary happenings. William Wallace, a young man of 22, when bringing James's remains to Adelaide in a cart was killed when the horses bolted down the hills to the bridge at the Ankaparinga River, overturning the cart and crushing him. There was some damage to the coffin, but the undertaker later denied the charge that was in circulation at the time that the remains had been scattered about the road. The accident happened at Wollonga Hill on the old road at the back of the church. Eventually James' remains were placed in the vault beside his mother's at West Terrace Cemetery in Adelaide. Hannah married Sir John Campbell of Ardna Merchant and Airds. John MacLeod 13th Chief of Race A, arrived in South Australia in 1846 and assisted Loudon and Francis in running the Nalong property. John died at Nalong on June 6, 1860. Headstone is near the Nalong homestead which has the following inscription, erected in memory of John MacLeod, ESQ, of Race A, Chief of the Clan Torquile, who died June 6, 1860, aged 53. Francis married Alice James Anna Fenton on December 1, 1858 at St. David's Cathedral. Hobart. She was the youngest daughter of Captain Michael Fenton of Fenton Forest, Glenora, Tasmania. Frank had the Nalong homestead built in 1857. Given the resemblance between this house and her home in Fenton Forest, Tasmania, Alice may have had some input into its design. The Surveyor General of South Australia, Mr. George Hudrook Goiter, he of Goiter's line fame, surveyed the area in the 1860s. It is suggested that Mr. Goiter reported to Parliament the quality of the Tatiara region, 
because in 1865 the South Australian Legislative Council decided on a policy of distrainment of the pastoral leases. One of the first areas to be distrained was the Tatiara and Nalan was the first property on their list, significantly increasing the property's valuation, with a tenfold increase in rent. Unless they bought their house and improvements from the government, at the government's new valuation and paid the increased lease, the McLeod family was to be evicted. Alice died in January 1867 at the age of 31 and was buried in the front paddock alongside her brother-in-law, Chief John in an unmarked grave. 1867 and 1868 were years of severe drought. Loudon McLeod died, May 11, 1868 and is buried at West Terrace Cemetery with his mother Flora and brother James. The lease on Nalam was reassigned to Francis. On the transfer of the lease the government increased the rent from £320 to nearly £2,000 per year, a fortune in those days, which Frank was unable to pay. Within 12 months Frank McLeod was bankrupt. Dispossessed, he was evicted from Nalan by the sheriff. He took the children to Tasmania where they were brought up by Alice's family. Francis McLeod died in Melbourne in 1874. Francis and Alice's three surviving children Loudon Hector who succeeded his first cousin James Collar as 15 of Racey, Michael Fenton married Florence, daughter of George Eady, and Florence Hastings who married J.J. Moore of San Francisco. Loudon Hector McLeod, 15 of Racey, was a Hobart accountant, a prominent footballer and cricketer, and alderman for the city of Hobart 1908 to 1919, and mayor in 1916. He married Frances Laura Bright, daughter of Dr. Richard Bright of Hobart. They had three children, Torquil, Loudon, and Laura. Torquil Bright McLeod, elder son of Loudon Hector, succeeded his father as 16th chief in 1935. He was educated at Hutchins School, Hobart, and at Hawkesbury College, New South Wales. He served in 1914 as a squadron leader in the 3rd Light Horse Regiment, campaigning in Gallipoli and Palestine, and being promoted to the rank of captain. In the 1939-45 war, he was lieutenant colonel commanding the 22nd Light Horse and Motor Regiment. He married Helen Christie, fourth daughter of G.C. Nicholas of Millbrook, Hughes, Tasmania, and had two sons, Torquil Roderick and Henrik Nicholas and two daughters, Catherine Christie and Fiona. He was a grazier and pastoralist at Richmond Park, Richmond from 1920 until his death in 1968. A justice of the peace, he was also warden of the municipality of Richmond from 1948 to 1958. He was president of the Royal Agricultural Society of Tasmania from 1949 till 1952 and church warden at St. Luke's Parish Church, Richmond for more than 40 years. Torquil Roderick succeeded his father in 1968 as 17th Chief of Race A. He was born in 1919 and educated at the Hutchins and the Friends Schools in Hobart and Geelong Grammar School, Victoria, and Melbourne University. He served in the 1939-45 war as a company commander in the 2ND-40th Battalion of the Australian Imperial Forces with Sparrow Force in the southwest Pacific Islands and was taken prisoner of war in the disastrous opposed landing at Timor in 1942. On April 30, 1947, he married Patricia Mary Littleton, only daughter of H.F. Turner and lived at Dysart House, Kempton, Tasmania. Torquil Roderick was a justice of the peace and warden of the municipality of Green Ponds. President of the Royal Agricultural Society of Tasmania 1975 and 1976 and president of the Equestrian Federation of Australia since 1960. He obtained matriculated arms for both McLeod of Racey, 1981, and McLeod of Lewis, 1988, and was officially recognised as Torquil Roderick McLeod of the Lewis and chief and head of the baronial house of McLeod of the Lewis by Lord Lyon King of Ardens. Prior to his death in 2001 and 1999, he resigned the arms of McLeod of Racey in favor of his son, Roderick John McLeod, as 18th Chief of the McLeods of Racey. Roderick John, 18th and current Chief of Racey, known as John, has a profound interest in McLeod activities, particularly those on the Isle of Racey which he visits regularly and has developed a good relationship with the islanders and interest in island activities. With this interest in Racey matters, and more particularly Racey House, John became patron of the Race House Community Company, the organization charged with the responsibility to manage the community ownership of the house and oversee its restoration and future use. This restoration is now complete and stands proudly as it was but with modern internal fitments and facilities. John was educated at the French School Hobart and completed a bachelor's in applied chemistry. On August 12, 1978, 
He married Elizabeth Grace, daughter of Kenneth Thorpe Downey of Noreen, Hamilton, Tasmania. John continued his father's and grandfather's interests in agricultural shows and was a director of both the Royal Agricultural Society of Tasmania and the Royal National Agricultural Pastoral Society and president of the Brighton Show Society. Additionally, John was a councillor for the Brighton Municipality and church warden for St. Luke's Church, Pontville, Tasmania. With a degree in industrial chemistry, John was employed at one of the world's largest zinc smelters in Hobart, but later followed his keen interest in agriculture to take a series of roles with a Tasmanian-based stock and station agent. More recently, John worked alongside Tasmanian industry and government to provide practical solutions to the state's freight, logistics, and infrastructure challenges and issues. John has now retired allowing more time for Clan McLeod and family affairs, still traveling to the UK to visit family and maintaining clan interests. He has had the opportunity to attend and open Scottish Highland Games both locally and overseas. John and his wife Liz have two children, Hannah who lives in Cambridge, England with her husband James Roberts and son Charlie and daughter Freya, and Alastair, younger of Race, who with his wife Phoebe and son Jack Roderick, live in Woodend, Victoria. With this interest in Race matters, and more particularly Race House, John became patron of the Race House Community Company, the organization charged with the responsibility to manage the community ownership of the house and oversee its restoration and future use. This restoration is now complete and stands proudly as it was but with modern internal fitments and facilities. John is a member of the Standing Council of Scottish Chiefs. The clan's surnames MacLeod and MacLeod, and other variants, are anglicizations of the Gaelic patronymic name MacLeod meaning son of Leod. This Gaelic name, Leod, is a form of the Old Norse personal name Aljadr which means ugly. Castles that have belonged to the clan MacLeod of Race have included Brochel Castle, a small and ruinous stronghold, seven miles up north of Clocken on Race, was held by the MacLeod of Race branch of the clan. Race House, built initially in the early 1700s as a small, laird's house by the MacLeods of Race. However, the new house itself had to be reconstructed only a year or so later, when Rudcoats plundered the island for the chief's support for Bonnie Prince Charlie at Culloden. Since then, the house has undergone several upgrades and renovations. Note. The crest badge is made up of the chief's heraldic crest and motto. Chief's motto, Lucy Honam Euro. Translation from Latin, I burn but am not consumed, or I shine, not burn. Chief's motto, Lucy Honam Euro. Translation from Latin, I burn but am not consumed, or I shine, not burn. References <laughs> 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 <laughs>